In here we're going to do a hot patina uh, on a piece of uh, silicon bronze and we're going to divide the sample in half. We're going to do one half with liver of sulfur uh, which I did previously. Uh, this is considered to be a base patina and we're going to do half the bronze with it so you can see the difference between the ferric nitrate, we're using ferric nitrate, that's iron mixed in nitric acid, ferric nitrate. Um, and we'll leak half of it with it and a half of it without, sort of. Um, you can leave the liver on just straight or you can burnish it back. I'm going to burnish it back so you'll get darks and lights in this uh, top area that's textured. Uh, so you'll see more of a transition and you'll also see more darks and lights bouncing back as light hits the surface, which is what sculpture is all about. Now I'm going to kind of pull off some of this liver of sulfur. You can see it's a brown color. And liver is generally a, a warm brown. Uh, where M24, which I have done previously, uh, M38, uh, slate black are all very uh, dark colors, more in the blue range than in the brown range. And again, as we did with liver before and all of the other base patinas, we'll wash it off. Generally what I do on something like this is I will wash it, then take it up, meaning to heat it. So I'm going to heat the bronze now with a torch, and I'll show you the torch in a second. Um, and usually what I do when I put my base patina on, or undercoat, is I will do what I think it should look like, then I will wash it, heat it up, and usually it turns a little darker, and I may want to go back and do it a second time, meaning to burnish back uh, to expose more of the metal, less of the dark, because when you heat it, it will go darker. Okay, now we're ready to put on our uh, ferric nitrate. This is ferric nitrate. Uh, Sculpt Nouveau sells this, or you can buy the chemical yourself, make your own, or buy it from us. We sell it in a very high concentration, so it can be uh, diluted 50% or 75%, depending on what you're looking for in a final patina. Uh, ferric nitrate is one of the five patinas that is transparent. So in the beginning it's transparent. As you keep applying more and more, it becomes a little bit more opaque. So this light surface, just the metal itself, will be much golder than will the surface on the other side that has the liver. It will be darker at the very beginning. I'm using a spray master. Uh, you can buy these at Home Depot. They put out the nicest spray, uh, more, most consistent and most controlled. That means you can go from a mist to droplets to a stream. Um, some people use smaller bottles, spray bottles. They don't have near the control uh, in the nozzle, as does the Spray Master. Now we're getting ready to uh, heat the metal. This is a propane torch. Um, very uh, small amount of BTUs. The surface of the metal should be around 220 degrees when you uh, put the patina on. Now we're uh, going to heat the metal. So one of the one of the three most important parts of a hot patina is the metal itself, how well it's been cleaned, how shiny the surface is depending on the kind of patina that you want. Second thing is strength of the metal, I mean strength of the uh, chemicals. The more chemical, the faster the reaction. So if you're beginning, you probably want to start with a very diluted solution of chemicals and water. The next thing is how hot is your metal when you put the patina on? This is uh, very crucial. This is why you're using a propane torch as opposed to an oxyacetylene, which has way too much heat. So you either want to use a propane or a gas air. Because you're looking for about 220 degrees, so 
the head of your torch temperature should be around 1800 degrees when you're doing this. One of the ways to do it is to take a chip brush, clean, with distilled water and go over the surface. When it steams off like it did right there, now that part right there is too hot, it's not steaming. Right there is perfect, right there is not good enough, so we've got to keep on going so we can get them all even. And that's looking pretty good, it's steaming off, making a sound. A little too hot right there. Let that come down. This is good, this is good, this is good, good. Just about right. Now we're right. Now the whole piece is just at about the right temperature. So for a nice even gold patina or brown, we're going to have a fine mist. So I'm going to use a fine mist in this. Okay, now what you're looking for, like I said, is to have it steaming off. If you have clean metal, you're looking for sort of a straw color on the metal. Then you can start misting on your patina. You can see it's changing color, going to a gold. Bottom now is pretty much at somewhat of a nice gold. The other side with the liver is a more of a chocolate color. Because of the liver of sulfur undercoat or base coat, this is pretty gold. As you put more, apply more heat and more chemical at this top area on the side with no liver, you'll see it'll start going darker on you. And the more heat and the more chemical, the darker it's going to get until it'll get to a burgundy brown. At this point it's a red sometimes it's used in sculptures where you have a, we need a lot of kind of a brick red color. You see the other side there is more into the chocolate brown. If I continue to heat this area at the top, it will go darker and darker. just about right for a gold patina. Now at this point you can either wax the patina while it's hot, ferric nitrate you wax while it's hot possibly, or, or you let it come down and you lacquer it. In this context we're going to wax the surface now. So now we're going to put the wax on. This is Sculpt Nouveau's wax for bronze, brass, and copper. We also have one for steel and iron. We also have 10 different colors. We have brown, black, reds, green, orange, uh, white. Uh, we have a lot of different colors. This is a good outdoor wax. You can see the difference in the colors by the use of the liver of sulfur on one side and the clean, clear metal on the other. You can see the reds, the chocolate browns in here the golds here at the bottom where I didn't heat it too much and I did not put too much uh, chemical on the surface. Next I would let this cool, buff it really good and then put my second coat of wax on. Generally on a piece of sculpture I'll put three coats of wax. Making sure that I buff each coat of wax in between, that's after the first one, buff it. Now on the second and third coat because it's going to be cold you want to make sure there's no ridges if you're using a brush because if the ridges dry and the wax hardens, you won't be able to get them out. So you want to make sure on the second and third coat, you always use a rag and work that wax around. You want a very thin coat of wax on the metal.